Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky, October 7th, this time around. So, um, what we're looking at this week, uh, the moon will be filling out. It's not too bad to start the week. It'll be, be, be pretty full by the end of the week on the evening of the 7th. Uh, so, right at the start of the week, the moon is sitting about two to two and a half degrees uh, south, southeast of Antares, the brightest star in Scorpius. So it's a nice pairing. It's a good chance to go out. The diameter of the moon's about a degree, you know, your finger uh, width at arm's length. It's a good chance to go out and see how close this appears. It's a nice close pairing, but they're not right on top of each other if you're two, two and a half moon diameters away for the bright star. So that's one thing to look at right away. By the next night, it will still be in Scorpius, and the moon will be about a third full from about a quarter full to, uh, and we'll have moved over and be sitting about three degrees, so a couple of finger widths at arm's length, uh, three moon diameters, uh, just above a bright open star cluster M6. This moon is not so full that I think you'll be able to see M6 there. If you have dark skies and a good southern horizon, M6 is a naked eye object. You can see M6 as a fuzzy patch glowing there. Open star clusters, you see the individual stars. They're in the disk of our galaxy, I recall. Uh, this is a beautiful open star cluster. A small telescope will just pop that into a, 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 a splash of glittering stars. I love this star cluster, and I love M7, which is another three degrees down below there. This is the, we're, 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 this is the time of three degrees. Uh, so this was just under three degrees from Antares. The next night, the moon is about three degrees above M6, which is about three degrees above M7. Another beautiful open star cluster. I love these two open star clusters, two of my absolute favorites. Uh, on the evening of the night, the moon will have moved on and will be approaching half full, 40 to 45 percent full. And it sits about three degrees again above a globular star cluster. Remember, the globular star clusters are in a halo around the center of the galaxy. Lots of stars, hundreds of thousands of stars instead of hundreds of stars. And far enough away that they look like fuzzy patches. we got three of them right here, M69, M70, and M54. Uh, M50, by the time you get to M54, that's probably five or six degrees from the moon. Uh, but you start three degrees and just move a few degrees at a time across and see if you can find those globular star clusters. These, uh, under good dark skies, good southern horizon, those are naked eye objects. These are not. Uh, binoculars might pull them out. Probably you want a telescope to study these globular star clusters. Then, we, last week, we were talking about Jupiter approaching the Crab Nebula, the supernova remnant from the year 1054, uh, and, it, and it was getting closer, but that stops this week, <laughs> okay? We're asking the question last week, how close is it going to get? How yeah, this is it for now. Uh, it's going to turn around and go back the other, other direction. We are catching up, or in the process of catching up and passing Jupiter. Uh, this whole region of the sky uh, rises by 10 o'clock. So you should be able to see Jupiter as a bright object in the southeastern part of the sky above the head of Orion. So Orion's down here, big bright Orion. Uh, the orange star Aldebaran is over here. So find bright Aldebaran. Orion down here, and Jupiter's the brightest object in that region above there. It is now in retrograde motion. It is moving west against the background stars as we catch up and pass it here uh, for a while. So it's stopped its approach to M1 and has turned back and going the other direction. So uh, keep an eye on Jupiter and watch it start to track back toward Aldebaran, which is over here. Jupiter's not moving that fast, but you will be able to see it make progress back to the west now uh, toward Aldebaran in the coming weeks. Okay, so that's that's all stuff with the moon and what. Oh, what, what point here, right? Right, Jupiter. Um, next week, right now scheduled this week as we're talking. I'm sure. I'm, I, what am I? I'm filming this on uh, October third. Uh, I'll go live on October fourth for you to uh, observe to watch. Uh, uh, one week from the time that I'm filming this, uh, NASA is scheduled to uh, launch a Europa Clipper mission. Uh, Europa is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter, uh, liquid ocean, big thick ice layer, interesting object because of some tidal flexing that heats, keeps that liquid ocean liquid in there and heats it and might give rise to, to life, people are interested in. So a lot of interest in Europa. NASA's going to launch the Europa Clipper mission, uh, and I've had the good fortune, a former student uh, of, of mine is, is a scientist on this mission, I've had the good fortune of being invited to go see that launch. So with any luck, if everything holds, if the rockets uh, work, and the weather's not too bad. It looks like a dismal week in Florida, uh, weather-wise, next week. 
uh, this week as you're watching. But watch October 10th, uh, Europa Clipper Mission is scheduled to launch. That's its first chance to launch. I'll be there uh, if there's uh, if the launch happens. So that, that's what we're looking for. We're thinking about Jupiter uh, this week. Looking forward to that. Uh, so over in the, in, the, in the morning sky and the evening sky all night long, um, you've got... We've talked about this before. I try to draw very familiar objects, and they just look miserable to me. This is supposed to be the Big Dipper, uh, but oh, goodness. Uh, the Big Dipper, these are the pointer stars. Merak is a 2.3 magnitude star, Dubé, and they point to Polaris, but in my mind, they miss Polaris. You've got to curve a little bit to the right, but they point on out this direction. In the evening sky, this is what we see in the evening sky right now. Uh, the Big Dipper's crashing down into the horizon and it's skimming along the northern horizon depending on how far north you are it may be below the northern horizon or it may be up a little bit higher and cassiopeia is climbing high into the sky up here in uh, in the east and it's getting pretty high in the sky by the time it gets dark now a uh, calf is the end star on that edge of the w right there a 2.3 magnitude star dube and merrick are the pointer stars 2.3 magnitude 1.8 good bright stars good bright star Cassiopeia is a good bright constellation for us to see. Polaris itself at 2.0 magnitude, pretty good. It's the end star and the little dipper. Uh, not as easy to see, not as bright. These stars at the end of the bowl I see all the time, but if it's hazy and stuff, I might not see the rest of those stars all that well. But let's think about on the way there. As we're passing along here, what we come to is M81 and M82. So well, let's, let's get up here and say there, Glausar is Lambda uh, Draconis. So it's the Lambda star in Draco, a 3.8 magnitude star. Decent skies, good northern horizon, you should be able to see that, uh, no trouble. Not as bright as these other stars, but not too bad. Now, being the end star in Draco, which, which wraps back around this direction, reminds us that on the evening of the 7th into the morning of the 8th, uh, we have our annual Draconid meteor shower. And so you have the Draconid meteor shower. It's a fairly feeble meteor shower, uh, but it's a meteor shower uh, that should provide 5 to 10 meteors per hour, maybe. Uh, and a good observing conditions. And that's about what you get from sporadic meteors. Meteor showers come from the remnants of a comet, maybe an asteroid one time, but, but uh, the remnants of a comet as we pass through there. And so we pass through that dust each, each year at the same time and we get these showers all coming from the same spot in the sky. But there's other debris out there in space that we just sweep up as we go by. And we'll see five to 10 of those per hour, random meteors we call them. This will double that number. So you'll see about five or 10 coming from Draco up here. Uh, looking like if you trace them back, they look like they come from Draco. Uh, so we see that, but if we go the other direction, if we make a triangle from Dubé to Klauser down this direction like that, you come to galaxies M81, M82. They're, they're pretty darn good galaxies for a small telescope. You've got a small telescope, see if you can find those. I recommend them highly. They're close to the horizon in the evening. Uh, but by the morning, this whole thing has shifted and rotated around, and Cassiopeia is over here setting, and... and uh, the Big Dipper is climbing up into the sky. I've been watching it every morning this week, so that's what's caught my attention to make me think about this part of the sky. You know, at 4.30 my time or 5 o'clock, I see the Big Dipper, uh, you know, zooming up into the sky uh, and, and starting to, to stand up over this direction. Uh, we keep going past Polaris. We get to the top of what I think of the house of Cephas, uh, the point of Cephas is Arai, is that star, a 3.2 magnitude star. Also, not as bright as these other stars, uh, but plenty visible if you have a chance. So see if you can find Arai. It's about the same distance from Calf as Glauser is from Dubé. As you're going this direction, as you're walking toward, Pol po toward Polaris, Glauser will be the brightest star. Lambda, Lambda Draconis will be the brightest star you pass along the way. Um, <clears throat> And so you'll see that as you get to Polaris. As you move past there, the next brightest star you come to is going to be Arai. You keep going that distance again. Uh, about that distance on, you're going to get to M52 is an open star cluster up that direction. Another nice open star cluster for you to observe if you've got your binoculars or your small telescope. So let's appreciate the northern sky right now. In the evening, you can go out and you can see... Cassiopeia climbing high into the sky. By the morning, it will be rotated around, and the Big Dipper will be replacing it in the morning sky. It won't be as high as Cassiopeia is in the evening sky when you saw it the night before. Check the Draconid Meteor Shower out. Uh, watch the moon pass by some interesting objects, and have a great week of observing. As always, thanks for watching, everybody.